What's up everybody, I'm here with Fabio Grigel uh, at Alliance Jiu Jitsu and Keller. Circling back kind of to the, the Live, Live of Jiu Jitsu uh, project you're working on now, uh, are you thinking about bringing it to the States? Are you thinking about yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're gonna have, we're gonna launch the next group uh, because there is a the Lima of Jiu Jitsu, we have 30 classes online, right? So you cover uh, different aspects of the academy, such as the digital marketing or the structure of the classes and how to build your timetable and how to price, you know, your, your, your academy and how to know the, the capacity that you're able to attend. So many other things. Uh, so you do this dividing 30 online classes. When we launch the course, we leave the, the classes, you know, we, we just launch the classes every day from Monday to Friday. So you have the weekends to review and then you keep going for six weeks. Okay. All right. Then you, you leave the classes there for more 35 days. So you have a total of, you know, almost Two, two months and a half or three months to watch and review and keep watching the classes that you like most. What we're gonna do for the next group in March, we're gonna put the, the English subtitles that we don't have it yet. And I'm planning to, to launch the video in English uh, for the end of the year, you know. I hope I can make it, you know. I need to get my English a little better and... Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, but I'll make it, I'll make a promise. <laughs> Speak very well. You were telling me earlier about the, uh, the methodology and, and what you see for the future as far as helping schools and helping kind of the whole industry. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I've been, I've been involved with, uh, with this project uh, since, you know, I would say two years ago, I started you know, start sharing uh, my thought about it and how to help people to get better schools. And because the, the, the problem with the majority of jiu-jitsu instructors, they don't have any source to get this knowledge. You know, so there is nothing that tells you how to run your school. You just, you just, maybe you, you, you've been an athlete and then you, you became an instructor and you open your own gym, but you don't have the techniques uh, in terms of business to run your, your, your business and grow. So I started doing this and um, the course that the program that we call Viver de Jiu-Jitsu in Portuguese, it means live off Jiu-Jitsu. And it's been great, you know, it's all the feedback that I got from the schools that have been doing this program for me are awesome, you know, and really motivated to keep going and keep helping people to deliver a better, better Jiu-Jitsu to their students. And I really believe that if everybody in the Jiu Jitsu community help each other, we can really you know, bring Jiu Jitsu to a different level. Awesome, that's one of the things I wanted to highlight is, is your perspective on uh, kind of in being inclusive and not, not competitive against, against each other, but kind of growing together and, and pushing Jiu Jitsu. I think it's very important to understand, for the instructors to understand that your competition is not in your next door academy or you know in someone that is in your neighborhood uh, you, there's a lot of people out there that don't do jiu-jitsu that they don't even know jiu-jitsu that's how you should target on marketing and the idea is not taking the students from one academy to the other is is bring jiu-jitsu is bring more people to jiu-jitsu people that don't even know what jiu-jitsu is all about the people must work together in order to get there, you know, and, and, and don't fight against each other. We are all on the same boat, you know, if the Jiu-Jitsu raise, everybody's gonna raise, and that's my point. You were talking about splitting levels, having more beginner classes. What, what does that look like uh, practically at your gym? Uh, in my gym, we offer 19 beginners class a week. So we have beginners class wow. every every shift like you can come 7 a.m we have beginners class only you can come at noon we have beginners class you can come 6 7 8 and 9 30 in the evening 
and you have beginner's class. So beginner's class is the door of your academy, is where the, the, the guy is gonna come in, right? So if you shrink your timetable in beginner's class, because most of the guys, they don't wanna teach beginner's class because it's a lot of work. It's much easier for you to, tra to, to teach the advanced no. because the, the advanced is basically warm up two or three techniques and put them to roll. It's a pretty easy class to teach, right? But right. fundamentals, you really need to teach the guy everything, right? Uh, so the people start to avoid that class because it's a lot of work. Every grip, every You have to every explain position. why you're doing this for every single move, right. right? So there's a lot of work on that. But that's what makes your academy successful, right? So if you just offer, let's say, uh, Tuesday and Thursday, 4 p.m., for your beginner's class, the people cannot come in, yeah. right? That's worst time for everybody, for average people that work, right? So you need to have beginner's class in the prime time if you wanna grow your school, right? And, uh, but if you take a look in the uh, majority of the academies, they still have like the prime time for advanced. Right. So in order to have a prime time for advanced, you need to have another mat to please the beginners, which, which the, of course, the ideal. When you have different mats, two you mats. can run two classes at the same time, you double the number of students you can have in that, in that period of time in your academy, you know? So uh, all these combined make your academy grow, you know? So uh, in my academy last month, we had 567 classes in a month. Wow. Right? Including privates and beginners and intermediate and kids and advanced and competitors and all the levels we have. Uh, and if you take a look in the competitors, they have five classes a week, so it's about 20 a month. You know? Uh. So it's, if you compare with the, the general uh, students that I have, we can say that we have like, I'd say 5%, yeah. you know, even less than that, you know, for competitors. Catering is towards, towards everyone because it just is for everyone. Of course. And what the, the, the academies usually try to do is put all the effort to, you know, turn those students in champions. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Jiu-Jitsu is way bigger than that. It can help much more people. Uh, competition is a small piece of the whole thing. All the competitions represents 3%. All the competitors represent 3% of the number of practitioners in Jiu-Jitsu. And then come my question. Should you turn your attention and energy for three percent of the market, or should you go for the other ninety-seven? My point <clears throat> is, you should go for the hundred percent, right? You should get, of course, the space for your competitors if you like, but it's definitely not gonna what gonna make your academy successful. This is definitely the other way around. Yeah, I can speak from experience. I, I when I att I've attended most most of the alliance courses as well, and, and you've talked a lot about the one, ones you've given yourself, you've mm -hmm. talked a lot about this. Yeah. Catering to the other 97% and having that door open big for beginners and for people to experience and fall in love with jujitsu. That was really key for me, having a gym to, to change my perspective. Oh, that's right, like, I do love jujitsu and I want to see other people fall in love with it, you know, regardless if they're going to compete, you know, regardless of... Yeah, that, when you were, uh, uh, you know, a, a real instructor, your passion is to teach, right? But we see a lot of people that they want to get the status of being a Jiu-Jitsu instructor, but they don't really love that mission, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and then it becomes hard when you don't love what you do, right? So when you love what you do and you, you do that for real, and you try to, you know, teach Jiu-Jitsu to people, and uh, Man, the beginner's class is the, is the funniest class to teach, you know? You see people really discovering what Jiu-Jitsu is all about. It's just amazing. So how can you 
don't offer jiu-jitsu for, to everybody. You know, it, it doesn't really go to my mind when uh, I cannot really respect an instructor that don't love to teach uh, uh, the beginner's class, to be honest with you. If you don't like to teach the beginner's class, maybe because you don't really like to teach jiu-jitsu. You just like to teach the competitor's class, you just like to teach the, you know, you want to be a coach. You know, hang out with your friends and it's completely different, yeah. right? It's one thing is being instructor and teacher, the other thing is to become a coach. Yeah. You know, you got to understand that difference. If the people understand that, it's not a problem being a coach. You know, you just need to understand that. Oh, I'm a coach. I got to train just for my, you know, competitors. And you see if you can, you know, get a successful academy doing like that. You know, just to give you guys a number, Alliance has over 30,000 students worldwide. And when you go for a competition, you go with maximum 300 com competitors. It's 1%, yeah. right? So, and Alliance is well known as a, one of the most powerful competition teams, right? And we go for a competition with 1%. And we are able to get a good team because you have that base of 30,000 people. Otherwise, it would be impossible because you just shrink your academy to the point that nobody comes in. You have no, no refreshment, you know, it's like just that old guys that one day they're going to stop and then you're going to be with nobody. Fabio, it's been a, been a pleasure. Um, tell us how we can follow you for the Viverde de Jiu-Jitsu. Oh man, uh, I think uh, Instagram is, uh, is a, the best platform to follow me now. It's at Fabio Gorgel, it's pretty easy. Uh, yeah, I usually post things from, from Viver Jiu Jitsu on Viver Jiu Jitsu fan page in Facebook. Also, my fan page in Facebook as well. Or you can just go to my website and put your email there, and I'm gonna feed you with emails every time. Yeah, we'll have links, guys, for every way you can follow. Uh, the general here. Make sure, guys, if you have an academy, it's it's super game changing. You gotta you gotta get a hold of this material. It's gonna be giving. It's gonna give you the tools you need. It's gonna really open your mind to like the best way to run a gym. In my opinion, it's helped me a lot, and uh, I'm seeing my gym grow uh, the past year, especially. So, make sure you get a hold of this stuff. Um, thank you, Master. Thank you, Sam. My pleasure to be here. Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks for watching. Guys, and make sure to, to uh, subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. Awesome.